Hi, it's Steve. Today is day 21 of my 30 days of video series and water fasting as I go along. Um, quick update on the fasting. Today was kind of miserable in the morning, just really low energy. Um, I've had a headache, a very mild headache, but it's been with me all day long. Um, I'm not taking any medication because I don't want to like do anything to mess up the detoxification process. Um, I noticed like throughout the entire fast, I've had really just nasty bad breath the whole time. That's actually one of the worst parts of the fast is just constantly having bad breath. Um, even if I have a little water with some lemon in it and or um, occasionally I have some herbal tea as well on the fast. Some people are real purists, they don't do herbal tea. Um, I don't have an issue with it to be honest. I haven't noticed any difference from having some herbal tea now and then. And, uh, or if I use mouthwash or whatever, it's like the bad, the bad breath just comes back with, <laughs> within a very short period of time. So it's really kind of disgusting. And you get that you know, coating on your tongue too when you're, when you're fasting. Um, and then you can often wake up in the morning with fuzzy teeth. I hate that. It's like feeling like there's some gross, nasty stuff on my teeth. So the body's just like eliminating through all different kinds of mechanisms and you just have to you know, weather the, that kind of experience. Uh, Rochelle is here now, and so since she's not fasting with me, she's eating. So we went grocery shopping uh, together a few days ago, and so there, it's weird, like opening the fridge and seeing, you know, food in there, and uh, you know, because I used up almost all of the fresh produce before I, I fasted, other than some citrus fruits like lemons, limes, oranges. Uh, so now the fridge is, you know, at least partly full with food again and, you know, watching Rochelle make these meals and eat. It's like she was having some potatoes with paprika on them um, just now before I was doing this video and I'm like smelling it. Oh, and and it's it's doubly tempting because my sense of smell is heightened from the fast. So I can smell things like even if it's not that wafting through the air, you know, she's not even necessarily cooking anything all that complicated. It's like I'll... I'll really smell it from from far away, and uh, like the the first day she was here, she made uh, this salad with romaine lettuce, spinach, avocado, some hemp seeds, and some green onions. And there might have been one or two other ingredients, but it just looked so good, and I could smell the green onions from so far away. It was like just looked like this beautiful salad. Rochelle is a bit of a food artist, so she likes making her food look really good when she eats it, and just makes me want to like, uh, <laughs> you know, have some of that. Uh, I'm not really hungry though, but it's, it's weird. You have this like craving for food, but it's not hunger. It's just like the desire to eat again or how nice it would be to have those flavors and those textures again. So, uh, but you know, I got enough discipline to keep going. So I'll, I'll just keep taking it one day at a time. It's hard to believe I made it three weeks already with no food. But uh, it's, you know, I'm still going strong. The, the problems and issues I'm having, like the mild headache, it's it, you know, like on a scale of one to 10, it was never worse than a three. And right now it's like a one. So it's really not that bad. Um, my energy has been coming back up now. So I decided, okay, I better do a video while my energy is good. But this morning it was just like so sluggish. I, I couldn't get off the couch hardly. You know, it was like, I did some work at my desk, but I had to do, do it in like, one hour at a time and take a long break in between just because I didn't want to wear myself out. I think yesterday I made the mistake of just working too much when my energy was tanking and I decided not to not to do that today. So I'm taking a lighter work day and just taking it easy and just going with the flow of the fast. Some people have told me that when they did long-term fasts, it was right around the three week mark that things got harder. I don't know if that's the case yet because I've seen this kind of you know up and down type of thing before on the fast. So I don't know if my energy is going to recover again, or if it's going to be low for a while, you know, this, um, the next several days or whatever. So I'll just have to wait and see, because I've never gone this far fasting before. So every day is new territory for me. But so far, so good. I'm handling it. So on to our topic for today, which is going to be uh, the challenges of abundance. So obviously when you're in a scarcity place, you have certain challenges to do. Often those challenges are rooted in some kind of neediness, like just finding ways, scrambling to get your needs met, like paying your bills and so on and not sinking into debt. And uh, Or if you are in debt, dealing with the pressures of that um, and figuring out how to like, you know, cut your expenses down and, and um, you know, there's a whole set of challenges that, that come with being in a scarcity situation. And I've certainly been through that kind of situation for years. But, 
you know, don't think that when you achieve some kind of abundance, especially financial abundance, that you're going to be free of problems. So you just get a different set of problems. It's like you graduate, you know, it's like going from high school to, to university. You end up with just different classes, different challenges to work on. And it's kind of the same thing here. It's still a, a lot of personal growth challenges that are going to be there on your plate. And they'll just be of a different nature. And some of them are actually very similar to the challenges of scarcity. It's just that the magnitude of them increases or the way you approach them may, may change a bit. So I just want to share um, uh, you know, about four of these types of challenges uh, because they're ones I've experienced and they're ones many of other, other people have experienced that I've seen go through uh, uh, challenges related to abundance. Now, in this case, I'm focusing more on the lifestyle and personal development aspects. I'm not talking about like money management or any of that stuff because there's so many other people sharing that kind of information um, and it's not my bailiwick. So I want to just focus on the, the personal growth side, like what it's like to have these challenges and by abundance, I'm not talking about like mega wealth per se. I just mean like maybe you've set up some passive income streams or you've got like, you've got the basics of your finances covered. So, um, you know, I often use like at this time, I often think of like maybe $10,000 a month is like a good level for people to get to, to start feeling pretty abundant. Because at that level, uh, if you're not living crazy lavishly, you can pay all your bills. And it's like you've got plenty of money to do what you want to do. And, you know, your expenses are well covered. Some people raise the bar a bit higher. I've heard some people say it's like, nah, it's like 200000 a year. So you got to go a bit higher than that. And, you know, that's in U.S. dollars. So translate to whatever currency you, you like. Of course, in different countries, you know, say like Thailand, you might be pretty abundant on just a fraction of that. Uh, so it's, it's very relative to where you live and how you live. Um, I remember spending, you know, some time in Oslo, Norway, and, which is like one of the most expensive cities in Europe, and then going from there to uh, Bucharest, Romania, and it was like everything was so much less expensive. I felt ten times more abundant just because of the drop in pricing, going from, um, you know, from from Oslo to Bucharest. Um, but, you know, to me, ten thousand dollars a month seems like kind of a nice level to get to. Uh, you might be able to do it with less. You might require more, depending on where you live and what your lifestyle is. But the idea here is that you've you've reached the level where you're not really worried about covering your expenses. It's like that's just automatic. Like it's pretty much going to happen. Like you're not worried about how you're going to pay your bills. And and now your focus shifts. Like you can still focus on making more money and creating more abundance. That's great. That can be a big part of it. But generally, when people achieve a certain level, it's like there's this now what feeling. Like, oh, wow, I actually achieved my goal. I'm here. And I've seen lots and lots of people achieve this goal. And they often go through, you know, like this adjustment period as they have to deal with some of the challenges of abundance. So the first major challenge, and this is one that often just hits a lot of people, and sometimes it surprises people just how hairy a challenge this is, is prioritization, especially with how you spend your time. Because... When money is not really the limitation anymore or resources, now it becomes a, a extra clear just how precious your time is because that that you know gets elevated and and you know it's something we really should treat as our precious resource uh, even when we're in a scarcity phase, but we perceive that even more clearly when the financial issue is is out of the way and we're not feeling financial scarce anymore. And it's like, okay, what do I do with my time? And you think, there's so many different directions I could go with my life. Also, depending on how you create the abundance, like if you do it with some kind of um, business where you're getting more, more customers, more clients, um, or more opportunities, you might have this flood of different opportunities. That certainly happened to me as, as my blog traffic grew, um, especially like in the range from 2004 when I started up till about 2006. I just started getting swamped with invitations to you know, partner with people and to promote different things and all these different kind of money-making deals. Um, and it was just like crazy overwhelming. And, it, and you have to learn you know, in this prioritization um, challenge, you have to learn to say no a lot. <laughs> um, and for some people, it's, it's definitely a bigger issue than others. For me, that is probably like you know, one of the biggest issues, if not the number one, is just prioritizing how I'm going to spend my time. And since um, I like centering my life around personal growth, you know, the biggest challenge of abundance for me is really like, what kind of growth experiences do I want to have and invite next? 
and I have to really pick and choose. And you've got to make some tough choices there because everything you say yes to, it means you're saying no to something else. Even, you know, in the crazy situation of doubling them up, like doing a 30-day trial of doing 30 videos in 30 days and water fasting at the same time, it still feels like, you know, I'm falling behind, like it's not enough. Like there's so many other growth challenges I want to do. And scheduling them and figuring out, you know, when to put, the, when to do them is, is you know, an issue. Uh, traveling, you might think like, okay, if you like to travel and now you have the money to travel, like where do you go? That's always a challenge for me. I've, I've been to, um, you know, since I really got into travel mode starting around 2010, I've been to probably about 15 countries. And, you know, I keep meeting people who've been to 40, 50 or more countries, and I just think, gosh, I'm falling behind. And yet, I'm generally picking up new countries each year. Um, last year, I added Mexico, Costa Rica, and um, Italy that I hadn't been to before. And then also, uh, I went to Canada and the UK. I've been to both of those places before, too. So it's like, you know, I've traveled to f five countries outside the USA in one year, and it feels like that's nothing. <laughs> you know, like compared, like compared to when I was in the scarcity phase, that's hugely abundant. But compared to other people who are enjoying all this abundance, like they're like, oh, I've done like 12 countries in six months. And I'm just like, oh, great. <laughs> so you can get into this little bit of a competitive thing with other people. Um, I encourage you to really like focus on your own values and just like pick and choose what, what's most important to you. And that, that is tricky, you know, and it's, it, there's no right or wrong way to do it. You just have to keep centering yourself back to your own values. One thing that helps me a lot is grounding myself in a sense of purpose. Like, you know, my purpose here I see is to like work on my conscious growth and to, and to share that with other people, to encourage other people to grow and live more consciously. So as I, as I get confused or thinking, oh gosh, I have so many different directions I could go, I just think, okay, let's go back to this one and you know, what's, what's really aligned with my purpose? Like where would be a growth experience in terms of traveling? What do I, what do I really want to experience? And I've learned that um, doing deep dive type of, type of things are, are really nice. Like going and traveling somewhere and just like immersing myself in the environment and really soaking it up for a while. I don't like doing, for the most part, like three or four day trips, unless it's just a short road trip somewhere. Um, I like doing like at least a week, if not two weeks, as a minimum, to go somewhere and really dive in and, and soak it up and experience it. Like when I went to Italy last year, that was like a, you know a couple of weeks, um, and that feels a lot more enriching on the personal growth side. Uh, so you know the, the the challenge here is just deciding between a vast sea of possibilities. When you're in a scarcity phase, you just don't have as many possibilities, or you probably don't think you do. And it's a bit of a mindset thing too, but um, it's quite often the case that we deny ourselves opportunities and we deny ourselves experiences because we would feel guilty about spending the money or we don't have the money to spend or we're not thinking creatively enough about how to create those experiences without spending money. And when you have the money and that's no longer an excuse, then it's just like, okay, what do I want to do? And you know, it's, now, you're, now you're really facing those tough prioritization choices. And even though it sounds like a great problem to have, and it is a great problem to have, it's still a really you know, difficult challenge a lot of the time, just deciding what to do when. Um, so I just want you to think about that as something to prepare for, that, uh, that these prioritization challenges that you're shoving down in a scarcity phase are going to pop up and just be in your face all the time when you're in an abundance phase. And that's not going to go away. And I've seen some people actually sabotage themselves on the abundance side um, and actually feel a little bit more comfortable back in that scarcity phase because it's like, oh, now I'm back in my comfort zone and I have the scarcity as an excuse for not really living a rich and fulfilling life and doing all the things I wanted to do and having all the experiences what I wanted to have and taking all the, all the, on all the growth challenges I'd love to um, you know, get into someday. So if, if you resist, you know, here's the general rule here and why I'm sharing these with you, even if you're not in an abundance phase right now, is that if you resist the challenges of abundance, you resist abundance. Because abundance comes with its own set of challenges. And if you're not ready to accept those and you're resisting in some way, and that's what's keeping you in the comfort zone of scarcity, you need to start actually welcoming and inviting that level of problem into your life, that level of challenge. And if you can, if you can invite the level of challenge, it'll help you invite the abundance as well. It'll make you less resistant to it. As Steve Covey would say, when you pick up one end of the stick, you pick up the other end. So it's like, you know, the, 
the experience of abundance comes with its own set of problems. It's the same stick. It's, it's all part of the same whole. So don't resist any part of that if you can. Um, begin to like accept and realize you're going to have to work on these challenges at some point. This prioritization one leads into another one, which is balance. So this, this is very closely related to pri you know, your priorities, but it can be easy to live a very unbalanced lifestyle. And you, you may you know, go into phases like that when you're in the abundance period where your life is just out of balance. Now in scarcity, your life might be very out of balance too, but this is another case where you might be um, denying yourself the challenge of figuring out how to balance your life because you just say, well, I don't have the money or I don't have the resources. And so, of course, I can't travel and of course I can't do these other things. And of course, I can't buy organic food or invest as much in my health because I can't, you know, I can't afford it. But when that can't afford excuse goes away, again, these problems rise up and they're in your face all the time, like how you balance your life. Uh, when you can take a vacation whenever you want, and you can take time off whenever you want, how much do you do that? How much do you work? What if you could go years without having to work at all? Um, do you work? Do you want to? You know, do, you, do you find some kind of balance between work and play? Um, you know, that's, that's something to be decided by you. How you balance time on, time off, there's no right or wrong answer there. It's entirely up to you. You can go through a phase where you're taking, you know, too much time off and you feel like, oh, it's just like lazy and stuff. If I take a lot of time off, I often feel super motivated to get back to work and then really driven. And if I work too much, then I start getting really burned out. And so you, you can use very non-traditional uh, working rhythms. You don't have to work like a 40-hour week. Um, I often will work longer hours when I'm really in an intensely motivated phase. And then I'll take just completely lazy days when I need shorter breaks and do like no work at all. Um, and then I'm, you know, when I start feeling like kind of burned out, like oh, I just feel this swelling up inside me, like I need some time away from work. I'm just like focusing too much or I'm getting stuck on things or things are going too slow and I need a fresh perspective. And it's like, okay, let's just take a vacation and travel for a few weeks. And that's, that's really nice too, to have that kind of balance. So don't feel like you have to drag you know, this traditional 40 hour work week or whatever into your abundance phase. Some people do that, which is, you know, interesting to see. And it can take a while to realize like, wow, I have this extra freedom. And the thing that a lot of people don't realize is that you don't automatically know how to use that freedom when you get there. <laughs> you actually have to learn how to apply it, how to use it, how to take advantage of it. Uh, you can go through an overindulgence period, you know, where you're just like overdoing it with all these kinds of crazy things and, you know, just because you can. And you may burn, on that, burn out on that after a bit. Uh, one, one really important thing to balance, which is probably a bit obvious if you want to enjoy your abundance phase, is to pay, pay good attention to your health. You obviously want to maintain good health so you can enjoy the abundance phase. Uh, but if you overdo it on all kinds of crazy things or go out partying all the time um, or please don't do this, get into like, you know, really bad drugs and stuff, then, you know, you can just like crash and burn <laughs> during your abundance phase. Some people have a really hard time handling that. We've seen all kinds of, you know, issues with celebrities and stuff blowing up and, um, and sabotaging their success. Uh, so, you know, creating the right balance for you and pacing yourself is really important, too. Uh, the third one I'll share is your relationships. Those can become really important for, you know, in your life because relationships, you know, it's been said are responsible for about 80% of your happiness in life. And you can get, you know, um, you can get a lot of financial abundance and feel still like your relationship side is, is weak. And oftentimes I've seen people with um, really bad social skills achieve financial abundance and they feel kind of lousy because their relationship life is nowhere. They don't have many friends or maybe they don't have any friends except people they connect with online. And I, I've gone to conferences before where I've met some pretty successful bloggers and um, you know, I've met some of them where their social skills are just atrocious because they've spent their whole life behind the computer. Um, that's how they built their, their business. And they can seem really extroverted when they're typing on the computer. You read their blog posts and you think, oh, this is obviously an extrovert. But no, um, you know, it's, it's, 
these some of these people are like dreadfully shy and I'm trying to have a conversation with them and it's like nothing's you know they like can't even talk <laughs> uh, in person so um, you know depending on where you are you're probably going to want to invest more in your social skills and it you know it just depends on how you achieved abundance but I've seen a lot of introverts and a lot of very shy people um, achieve some level of financial abundance and now it's a really big daunting challenge to upgrade their social life and to upgrade their relationship skills maybe even more difficult for them than getting to the financial abundance part uh, so that's like a whole other area for for investing you can overdo it here too uh, depending you know uh, depending on how you go about it I've I've definitely had some phases where I felt like, okay, my social life is just getting like crazy uh, ahead of me. In fact, there was one time several years ago, I posted a blog post about declaring social bankruptcy. <laughs> like, like my social life just got way ahead of me and I was just like, I can't keep up with all the invitations and all the friends and I was just like, I give up. <laughs> so if you don't hear from me a while, from me for a while, I just need to like go in my cave and be by myself a little bit and just like hit the reset button and, and rebalance this area of my life. I remember um, I was at a retreat and uh, Jack Canfield, uh, his wife, um, you know, he, or he said he said that his wife said to him at one point, you know, Jack, would you please stop making new friends? <laughs> because their life was like so so abundant, and so many cool friends, they just couldn't keep up with all the relationships. So that's that's in some sense a good problem to have, but it can make you feel kind of lousy if you overdo it on the friendship side, because then you might have people um, emailing you or calling you and you're just feeling like socially burnt out and, you know, people are like feeling hurt because you haven't followed up with them and, and you know, we, I think it's been said like our brains have the capacity for about 150 relationships, but really those exist in, in circles, like you might have you know, your partner is really close and maybe five people in a circle beyond that, like your family or just very close friends. And then another circle around that, say like maybe 15 people or so. And then just different circles of different levels of, of connection and intimacy. And, you know, there can be a lot of people who want to like move from the outskirts into one of your circles or move from one of the outer circles into the inner circles. And you may not, you may simply not have the, the, emotional and mental bandwidth for, for all those relationships. And so you have to just, you know, pick and choose and start saying no sometimes. And that's, um, that's probably, you know, like definitely in the, in the top two, like along with prioritization it, for me, that's, that's been a really difficult one. It's just like balancing the, the social abundance. Um, and it's partly because of the way I, I went about creating financial abundance was like from blogging and having all this, um, attention coming through my, uh, through my blog, and so having to balance that is, um, you know, it's it's its own kind of problem. That's one of the main reasons I just decided to quit, um, you know, social media uh, a few years ago. Like, you know, closing down my Facebook account, and I used to have a Facebook account with five thousand, you know, friends in my personal list. Of course, they're friends. Like, I don't even know most of those people, um, and a Twitter account with over thirty thousand followers. And I was just like, you know, this is just too much socially. And even though it might have some business advantages, and I'm sure it did, it was unbalancing my lifestyle too much. So, as you can see, like these three things I've shared already: the prioritization, the balance, the relationships. They're all, you know, interlinked. Um, so. So it's just like different ways of, of looking at this, the same type of challenges. Uh, but you have to, you know, you have to like not let your, your um, momentum get ahead of you. And you've got to uh, oftentimes put the brakes on it, start saying no and making some conscious choices to keep your lifestyle in balance, to keep yourself happy and healthy and enjoying uh, the abundance that, you, that, you've, that you've created. I have, uh, you know, met some very successful authors, trainers, speakers, people who've been on Oprah like six times and whose businesses are like 10 times or 100 times um, more financially successful than mine. And a number of them have said that they're jealous of me. And I'm like, why? Like your business is like way, you know, bigger and, you know, you're traveling all around the world and, and all that. And they say, yeah, but you have freedom. And I'm like, well, don't you have freedom too? Like, what do you do with all your money and stuff? Like, doesn't that give you a lot of freedom? They're like, you know, I have to keep doing this. Like, I have to keep coming out with a new book every year. I have to travel 200 days a year. I have to keep speaking and doing events and, um, you know, doing uh, media appearances and, and all that uh, to keep the machine going. 
And some of them have told me like they feel like they're doing all that work just to keep paying their staff. And they don't feel like they have the freedom to just take time off whenever they want, enjoy their lifestyles. So that's another you know trap of abundance you gotta watch out for is that you don't overdo it so much that you're just going for abundance in the financial area and like more money, more money, more success, more fame, um, you, you know, more in, more um, career achievement and professional success and all that. And you balance it with creating a really awesome lifestyle for yourself. And the people I know who are happiest, they say no to some very tempting offers for growing their businesses and you know improving their careers because they feel it would totally unbalance their lifestyle. And you know that's like definitely something you got to pay attention to. So you know in this in this area of relationships, another thing I'll add to this is that um, your relationships will probably change a lot. Some people will, uh, you know, depending on how your relationships are now. If you go from a scarcity phase to abundance phase, especially if you do it fairly quickly, some of your old friends, contacts, family members just may not be able to keep up with you. They may have issues with it. They may assume you're a different person now, and maybe you are a different person. You probably will change in some gray, so some way, and they may not be able to take that personal growth journey with you, and that's okay. Um, I, I would say the best rule here is don't get clingy. Uh, you know. Be willing to let your relationships float a little bit and change and shift. And uh, you might just find that, um, you know, if, if certain relationships just can't handle who you've become and you see some bitterness, resentment showing up, or you, um, you know, you get these like, like, um, you know, veiled insults that are coming your way, like negative comments about rich people or something, and you're just thinking like, hmm, is that directed at me? Is that personal? What's going on here? And you start having these suspicions and doubts about the strength of your relationships. You know, you might want to just like loosen up a little bit. And I would say it really helps a lot to get in some kind of networking group with like-minded people. Uh, like, you know, like uh, if you're an entrepreneur, getting with a group of other entrepreneurs, people who are on the same path, people who, who can understand and share and resonate with your journey. I love hanging out with other abundance-minded people just because like we're on the same wavelength and we don't need to justify anything, anything to ourselves. And you know, rarely do people like talk so much in conversation about the money. I see a lot of like money-related conversations posted online, but in person, it's quite often that people talk about other things like lifestyle and places they've traveled to. It's like the abundance is just something you accept as normal. Like, okay, so yes, we've, we've got that. There's no point in discussing it. Let's talk about what we do with it and, and uh, how people are living their lifestyles. And that's what's really cool is like just seeing all those examples and models of how people are prioritizing their decisions and how they're creating balance for themselves. So that's, that's, a, that's something you'll probably want to upgrade at some point is your relationships is you know like attracts like in, in a certain way and in abundance-minded people when you become one you're probably going to crave hanging out with other abundance-minded people and it is really very joyful i also connect a lot with uh scarcity-minded people still you know i have meetups with them occasionally uh they just you know come through my life at some point or another i get emails from them and it's just remarkable just seeing the contrast there and I'd say one of the one of the things you know I really notice is just how um, you know how the scarcity-minded people are always um, you know telling themselves they can't do certain things, and the abundance-minded people um, are more just thinking about you know what should I do, what should I do, <laughs> um, and it's like a difference between like what can I do and what should I do. And the inter you know, what's interesting about that is I realized what really helped me get out of scarcity was adopting some of these mindsets of abundance. Is like think, starting to think more of more like an abundance-minded person, even before I got past the scarcity phase. And that's what really drew me out of the scarcity phase is when I started thinking about, like my life, my life balance sucks while I'm in scarcity, and I just started creating balance, like exercising more, going for runs along the beach, even while I'm in the scarcity place, and. You know, just trying to um, carve out the happiness that I could with the resources I had. I still invest a lot in personal growth. I just didn't spend money on it. I would go to libraries and I'd I'd rent audio programs and I'd um, you know check out uh, uh, book you know lots of different personal development books. I'd go there and you know grab like five or ten books and and read them all, all for free. 
And so I just said, okay, so what if I'm in scarcity? I'm just going to see that as a bit of, it's part of the game of life. You know, it's a phase to go through. I need to experience this, and I, do, I need to learn the lessons from, of scarcity and be, so I can be able to graduate from them. The, uh, the last challenge I'll share is adapting to change. Like when you're in this abundance phase, you, you know, you obviously, if you like it, you're going to want to maintain it and not sink back down to scarcity. And life will occasionally, maybe even often, depending on how you are maintaining your abundance, throw you some challenges that might knock you off and possibly send you back down and, and get you into a place where you're feeling like similar uh, financial pressure to what you experienced when you were broke. Uh, like you might have a bad business deal that happens and it's threatening, threatening you and things like that. And the challenge here is not sinking back into a scarcity mindset, but approaching these challenges still as a creative, abundance-minded person. Because abundance really begins first in the mind. It's, it's about harnessing your full creativity as a human being and not letting problems beat you down. It's really about embracing how powerful you are. And, and you'll probably get challenged with that along the way. <laughs> um, and, and also, after you achieve a certain level of abundance, you might have this like situation where your business model that was working or the income streams you, you were using now start to dry up. The market shifts, things change, and you've got to you know, go back to school, so to speak, and relearn a different way of creating and maintaining abundance. Uh, you know, that, I've been through phases like that you know, multiple times, just all these different kinds of income streams I created with my, with my work and trying to find ways, different ways to balance them. And I'm in a pretty abundant phase right now, but I always know like, reality's gonna change, things will shift. And you know, the ideas I have now might not work in five years or 10 years. So you always gotta be open to learning and growth and, and embracing the change and seeing it as a, yet another invitation to grow. And not seeing it is like something that's beating you down. It's just like, hey, it's another level of challenge. Uh, so, you know, business models do go obsolete and income streams do, you know, die off. So there, there'll be this, you know, set of challenges that will keep you on your toes. Like, okay, you know, you, you're at an abundance phase. Like, how long are you going to stay there? <laughs> uh, are you going to sink back down again? Are you going to, you know, go back to scarcity? Is that still your comfort zone? Um, and once you get into the comfort zone, I think, of the, being able to embrace and accept these abundance challenges, it allows you to deal with these financial issues or these financial challenges without sinking down again, without going back to that mindset of scarcity that says, I can't do this, I can't do that. It's just like, hey, screw it, you know, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure this out. And I like that it's keeping me on my toes. Uh, you might even have like a bit of a conversation with reality itself. I sometimes do that, like with the universe. Oh, throwing me this challenge, eh? All right, I'll I'll t I'll tackle this. You know, uh, you're not gonna knock me down. Nice try, but I I I got this covered. Um, and just like you know, kind of declaring to myself, like, hey, I'm still powerful. I can still handle this. Whatever comes my way, I'll figure it out. Um, I'll make it through it. And if if a crash happens and I lose all my stuff, who cares? It's just stuff. I'll get it back. You know, if I even care about the stuff. But even if I don't get it back, I can lose all my stuff and still have an abundance mindset. That's the best part is like when you feel you've really locked into that abundance mindset so that any external event that happens, you're still just going to think um, think, th think in terms of how resourceful you are on the inside and, and, and leveraging all the skills you have. Uh, and, and I think one of the best things you can do with abundance in this case is like when you have the financial abundance, invest a lot of it back in yourself. Like invest it in your own personal growth. Uh, invest it in, in connecting with other communities of, of people who will help you maintain that mindset and give you new skills and knowledge and resources. Invest it in your social skills um, and invest it in your health. And that way, even if the money gets wiped out, now you have all those inner resources. So you use that external resource of the money to like upgrade your inner resources massively. And you'll be right back where you started in a little while. Like I honestly feel, and I know a lot of abundant-minded people who feel the same way, you could take all my stuff away, like take all my money away, all my resources, you know, um, my blog, just destroy my website, you know, whatever. And I just start out from scratch and I'll be back where I, you know, to a similar level of abundance, maybe in a year or two, maybe, maybe a lot less. Um, you know, and like you could even take all my friends away, <laughs> and I'll just start with different friends. And because it's it's so much internal, it's so much in the mindset. 
you know, it's like so much in in this the skills you develop and and uh, just the the um, the ability to be deeply in touch with your power, with your creative energy as a human being, uh, and and that's you know that's like a really cool part of this path is being able to take um, the resources you get from abundance and invest them into making yourself stronger and then creating you know lots and lots of positive ripples in the world and realistically like you may have some setbacks but you'll you'll likely be able to bounce back from pretty quickly um, and again this is where that relationships one becomes really important because if you if you invest so much just in the money side and you don't build really strong relationships then if you crash and burn financially who's going to help you get back up again you have to do it all on your own yet again but if you really lock in a really rich and, and strong relationship life and you crash and burn, you're going to have a nice network of friends and contacts and associates, colleagues who will lift you back up again, emotionally, maybe even you know, helping you out financially. Um, in, in one of his books, well, Harvey McKay is an author of, of many, many books, like uh, Swim with the Sharks Without Being Eaten Alive and, and so on. And you know, he, he talks about like one of the rules for like telling how abundant your network is, is how many people could you call like late at night and say, I need to borrow $25,000 and get it like really quickly. <laughs> and he's like, I could go at least 50 people, you know, and get $25,000. I'm like, wow, that's like an awesome standard. Um, it's like, you know, who trusts you that much? They would lend you $25,000. Well, of course you might have really wealthy friends to whom, for whom it's not a lot of money. But I mean, imagine if you had like 50 friends all willing to loan you some money if you hit, hit a rough spot. It's like that's you know that's really cool um, for you know the kind of investment you could make on the social side. So um, you know that's not something I can say I could do at this point. But maybe I mean I haven't tested it. But but uh, uh, it, it's really good to know you know that you it, it really I think um, you know having social abundance is a huge part of. Of this whole abundance picture, it's not just about the money. It's uh, if you have a really rich social network and you invest a lot in that, um, it it can give you basically a huge safety net for when you start, you know, encountering difficulties. I see this all the time with groups of friends that I I, I connect with, especially online, where somebody just has a really bad week or whatever, and it's like everybody else is lifting them back up again, pulling them back up emotionally. Sometimes people will even directly help out, like helping with their business. Um, like writing sales copy for them when they're just totally burnt out, and it's really amazing to see that kind of that kind of connection and support. So this video is just meant as a, you know an overview of like some of the key problems you'll have uh, when you get into abundance phase. So you know just a quick review. It's like prioritization is a big one, balance, getting your relationships right, and being able to adapt to change and bounce back from problems. Uh, so again, you know, realize that when you pick up one end of the stick, you pick up the other end. So if you if you want abundance in your life, I th really think it helps to think through some of these problems and challenges and realize that part of scarcity is avoiding dealing with these kinds of challenges because you don't feel like you're ready to face them. And so if you feel you know if you feel like you want more abundance in your life, start thinking through how you can start embracing these problems as well. Like realize you're probably going to need to work more on your social skills and you're going to need to work on your ability to prioritize and keep your life in balance and you're also going to have to deal with the possibility of of losing it you know like you if you achieve it you've got to be able to keep it if you want to uh, so you know so th think through if you have any resistance to any of these challenges because if you do you may be resisting abundance itself and if you can reduce your resistance to the challenges then you also can invite more abundance to come to you. I'll see you tomorrow.